Hello, my name is Ramesh Dungana. I teach physics and astronomy at the University of Colorado, Denver. In this video, you will learn about the basics of trigonometry. More specifically, you will learn about a right angle triangle and trig functions like sine, cosine, and tangent. Similarly, you will learn about a Pythagorean theorem that relates the three sides of a right triangle with an angle. And you will learn to find a side of a right triangle from known angle and another side. That will be very handy to find components of a vector in later classes. And you will learn to solve an equation that has trig functions. Look at this picture. Artists also like triangles. Arm of David in this famous art is a triangular shape. Now let's learn about a triangle and a right triangle. A triangle has three sides and three angles, as you can see in this sketch. If one of those angles is 90 degree, then the triangle is called right triangle. Sum of all these angles in a triangle is 180 degrees or pi radians. And how do you name three sides? Let's learn about that. The longest side is called hypotenuse, and I'm denoting it by lowercase h. And it is across from the 90 degree. Yes, folks, that is the hypotenuse. Now, to learn about other two sides, we have to first assign an angle. In a problem, an angle could be given, or you may be asked to find an angle. So let's call that angle an angle of interest. And let's say that angle of interest, in this case, is this one here. I'm using a Greek alphabet theta to represent it. So now, after marking the angle of interest, we are ready to name the sides. The side next to the known angle is adjacent, and I am denoting that by lowercase a. Easy peasy, isn't it? Now, the other one is called opposite for obvious reason because it is opposite to the angle of interest. It is across from the known angle. Yes, that is opposite. We are now ready to learn about trig functions. The sides and the angle of a right triangles are related to each other, like human hair brother, sisters, and cousins. The triangles also have sine, cosine, and tangent. Those relationships are collectively called trig functions. Okay, let's start with a trig function that relates opposite side with hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse. So this ratio is given by sine of the angle. And remember, a trig function without an angle has no meaning. So that's why we have to make we have to have the sign of some angle. In this case, the angle is theta. Like without specifying angle, there are no meaning of the sides adjacent or opposite. Similarly, without the angle theta. No meaning of trig function. Sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse for that angle. And in short, it is also known as SOA. S for sine, O for opposite, and A for adjacent. Another function that relates adjacent side with the hypotenuse is called cosine. It is called C for cosine, A for adjacent, and H for 
hypotenuse. At another function is called tangent function. It relates adjacent and the opposite. In short, it's called TOA for obvious reason. You saw each of these trig functions has three quantities, one angle and two sides. If you know two of them, you can calculate the third one using a suitable functions. For example, let's say if you know hypotenuse and the angle, then you can solve this equation for adjacent by using cosine function or for opposite by using sine function. So let's have a little fun now. Let's divide sine by cosine. And you know sine is what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So this is just a sine. But we are planning to find sine over cosine. So now we need to divide this fraction by another fraction, which is A over H. So when we have two fractions, dividing each other kind of looks weird. But there is a technique. You can convert the division of fractions to a multiplication of fractions. For that, you invert the second fraction that is in the bottom. So cosine being in the bottom, this fraction going to be in the bottom. So you invert this and write it here as a multiplication. So instead of A over H, now it is H over A inverted. So now we, you can see there is H on the top h on the bottom. So h over h is 1. So that means we can simply cancel it, leaving us o over a. And what is o over a? Hey, it is tangent theta. So we derived a trig identity. Sine over cosine is tangent for a given angle. And there is another famous identity. You can prove it by using the same technique. It says sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So how do you prove it? Just replace this sine theta by O over H. And of course, it has to be squared because sine is squared. So it's going to be O is squared over H is squared. So this is one fraction. Now you need to similarly add another fraction for the cosine is squared. That's going to be A squared over H squared. So when you add those fractions, you'll get 1. OK, now there is another equation that relates three sides of a right triangle, and it is called Pythagorean theorem. According to this theorem, sum of the square of adjacent and opposite is equal to square of the hypotenuse. Or in another words, square of the longest side is equal to the sum of the square of these remaining two sides. Let's leave the theorem here for now and move on. Now let's pause a moment and read this question and use the knowledge of trig function to answer this question. Okay, I'm hoping you did your work and chose one answer. Now take a look. We can we want cosine of the given angle theta. From its definition, we know it is adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, theta is the angle of interest. It means the side labeled as uh, 3 is opposite side, and 4 is adjacent. 
And based on the definition of trig function, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it is 4 over 5. 4 over 5. So B is the correct answer. So now let's do two more problems. This is an example of application of trig function where you can compute the height of a tall building by measuring the length of the shadow it cast on the ground. And the angle the sun makes with the top of the building when viewed from the end of the shadow. Go ahead, pause this video and read the question. And after that, try it yourself first. My turn now. We can model this problem as a right triangle because the shadow is in horizontal direction on the ground and the building is vertical direction. They are making a perfect 90 degree over here. By connecting the tip of the building with the tip of the shadow, we complete a right triangle. On the top over there is the angle of interest. Therefore, the shadow length in this case becomes opposite side of this right triangle. And the height of the building becomes adjacent side. The problem tells the shadow length, which translates to the opposite side, is 222 meters and the height of the building which translates to the adjacent is equal to 111 meters. What do you want to know in this case? The answer is this angle. How is this angle related to these two sides? Remember, we can use a trig function whenever we have two sides and an angle. So in this case, we know our opposite, we know adjacent. So which trig function relates these two angle? Hey, that is this one here, tangent. Now we need to solve this equation for theta. We write the angle theta like this. It is called arc tangent or inverse tangent, but it is not 1 over tangent though. Don't get scared, scientific calculators have these functions. So now you plug in the value of O from here and A from there and the ratio becomes 2 and inverse tangent of 2 is this and you will get that from your calculator. So that is the angle that we are looking for. Another problem gives you three equations, but two of them have trig functions, sine theta here, cosine theta here. In this problem, trig is married to algebra to have some answer, okay? If you are not comfortable solving equation in terms of variable, please watch the video I have linked in the description. This question is asking you to solve for this mu in terms of just angle theta. So we want to get rid of m, z, f, n, everything. The mu you want to solve for is in this third equation. So let's start from there and solve for mu by moving n to the other side. So this equation becomes this. So now we need f and we need n. We can find f from the very first equation by simply moving this negative mg sine theta to the other side which becomes positive. Similarly, the second equation gives you n. Now we have our n and f, so we can go and replace this f by mg sine theta, and 
n by mg cosine theta. mg here and here cancels because we are dividing mg by mg which is 1 giving us simply sine theta over cosine theta and hey we just learned that sine theta over cosine theta is tangent that's an identity right see how knowing a trig identity can simplify an equation if you know theta you can compute mu or other way around if you know mu you can solve for theta in that case you need to take inverse tangent. I hope you learned basics of trig from this video. Maybe I'll meet you in another video or in our class. Bye-bye!